So she asked a very good question. What are the similarities between worship in Islam and Hinduism? And she gave an example that when they go for pilgrimage, they shave the head. Muslims also, when we go for Hajj and Umrah, we shave the head. They circumambulate and we circumambulate. All similar. There are many similarities in worship as far as the shaving the head is concerned. The reason we Muslims, when we go for Hajj, we have to shave our head, is for humility. For humility. That we are humble before our Creator Almighty God. And normally, you know, hair is a form, you know, for style. Therefore, you find that many men and women, they go to have hairstyles, you know, different, different hairstyles they have. So when we shave, we are just showing humility that our humbleness is due to Almighty God only. In Hinduism also, they have a similar concept of shaving. For humility, it is matching. Regarding circumambulation, the reason we circumambulate, people object that if Islam is against idol worship, then why do you circumambulate on the Kaaba? Why do you bow down to the Kaaba? Don't you worship the Kaaba? And the Hindus, they circumambulate and when they worship. The difference between the Hindu circumambulation and Muslim circumambulation is a difference of chalk and cheese. We bow down to the Kaaba in a Salah, it is as a sign of direction, it's a Qibla. Kaaba is a Qibla. If we offer Salah, we have to offer in the same direction. Today, if you want to offer Salah here, some will say let's pay north, some will say south, some will say east, some will say west. So for unity, all the Muslims face towards the Kaaba. So those living in the west, they face towards the east. Those in the east face the west. Those in north face the south. Those in south face the north. And if we analyze Kaaba, the world map, the first person to do the world map was al idrusi in 1154. When the Muslim drew the world map, North Pole was down and South Pole was on top and Kaaba was in the center. Later on, the Western cartographers came, they turned the map upside down, North Pole top, South Pole down, but yet Kaaba is in the center. <laughs> the reason we circumambulate around the Kaaba is because Allah has told us, Prophet has told us we do it. My logical reason I can think is because every circle has got one center. When we circumambulate around the Kaaba, we are testifying that there is only one Almighty God. But if you circumambulate around the Kaaba and believe many gods, you're not doing wrong. And regarding worship, the statement of Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, which is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Hajj. He said that I'm kissing this black stone. This black stone can neither benefit me, can neither harm me. I am kissing it just because my Prophet kissed it. This statement of Hazrat Umar is sufficient to testify that no Muslim worships the Kaaba. And furthermore, my argument is, during the time of the Prophet, there were Sahabas who stood on the Kaaba and gave the Azan. No idol worshipper will ever stand on the idol he or she worships. So this proves that we Muslims don't worship the Kaaba. It is only a symbol. It is only a Qibla. And regarding other similarities, sister, there are other similarities. There are various other forms of worship in Hinduism. One form of worship is known as Shashtang. Shashtang from Kamsha, Asht means art, and Ang means part of the body. Eight part of the body. One type of worship in Hinduism is eight part of the body. Touching eight part of the body. The best way you can do is like we Muslims do the sujood in Salah. Touching our forehead, our nose, our two hands, two knees and two feet, shashtang, eight parts of the body. Forehead, nose, two hands, two knees and two feet. And sujood is the best part of the salah. It is mentioned in several places in the Quran. And furthermore, regarding Makkah, the mention of Makkah is even in the Hindu scriptures. The word mentioned for Makkah in Hinduism is Elai Spad. Ila, as I said, is God, and Spad means place. So Elai Spad is one of the place of Piritha place of pilgrimage which is mentioned in Rig Veda, book number 3 hymn number 29, verse number 4 Elias Pad, in the Sanskrit dictionary Elias Pad is place of God house of God, it's a place of Tirta, place of pilgrimage, same thing as mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3, verse 96 the first place for worship was Bakka which is another name for Makkah, so Makkah is even mentioned in the Hindu scriptures and it says that this Elias Pad will be in the Naba Prathvi in the center of the earth. As I told you, Kaaba is in the center of the earth. And furthermore, the few verses later, Rig Veda, book number 3, hymn number 29, verse number 11 says, it talks about Narashangsa, the prophet who is called the praiseworthy. So because this prophet is also mentioned along with Elias Pad, it's very clear cut that one of the places that the Hindus should go for pilgrimage is the Makkah. Hope that answers the question. Can we have the next question for brother on yeah. my right? I am Devraj, I am a metallurgical engineer, I am working as a senior manager in tractor and farm equipments. 
dear brothers and sisters today is an excellent evening i can say is a really an eye opener to all hindus and i was really amazed astonished surprised and what not about the illustrations given by dr zakir from various vedas upanishads i have to admit and most of the people here also will admit it's really a god's gift given to dr zakir <laughs> one thing i could notice here is the specification is very clear in islam for the human being to be followed in hindus it's not clear is there is not clear <laughs> lot of misinterpretations are there lot of interpretations and opinions beliefs is based on there it is there but in a different format my request to the organization is to call hindu scholars and hindus and arrange for a debate so that truth will come to surface <laughs> so that hindus and muslims can become much closer and closer <laughs> and be together to to be together towards the prosperity a unity and peace for the nation and society thank you thank you the brother has given a very good suggestion and appreciate him i do agree with him it's our opener for many of the hindus even for the muslims it's an eye opener even for the muslims brother i'm sure is it or not yes. and the brother has given a very good suggestion that we should call the hindu scholars and have a debate i would say rather a dialogue and that is again based on the verse of the quran which i started my talk with sulaim imran chapter 3 verse 64 which says talu ila kalmatin sawa in baina bainakum come to common terms as we assign you and that's what i'm doing brother i'm traveling in different parts of india different parts of the world having dialogues with scholars of christianity of hinduism i'm only a student i'm not a scholar i'm a student of comparative religion and i have had discussion dialogues in kerala with hindu priest in bombay and now there is a request inshallah i'll be going to bangalore very shortly within a couple of months that shri shri ravi shankar he has requested we should have a common dialogue <laughs> and you may have heard of the person the shri shri ravi shankar he is of great fame he has got centers in 40 different countries of true living and if anyone in madras if you can organize brother if there's any priest in madras we would love to have to come on a common platform and have a dialogue I was there in Madras and I spoke with Shankar Acharya of Kashi when I'd come last time a few months back and we had a discussion on the issue of Babri Masjid I asked him some questions and I gave him some clarification of Kashi and there's no problem brother we love it we are here to come to common terms if you can arrange or any brothers out here non muslim or muslim brothers can arrange any dialogue just come to common understanding but get a person who's knowledgeable you know knowledgeable of high standard with the shankar acharya or top priest so that we can discuss and come to common terms live harmoniously build a big indian nation do we have a question from a non muslim yes, sister yes exactly uh, question from a non muslim friend of mine uh, she is asking me like uh, within you muslims itself you have confusion like uh, when you meet you ask first the question is uh, whether you are a wahhabi or a sunna sunni whatever this kind of questions there is a confusion between you itself what do you want us to follow what is that uh, we can exactly come follow and uh, the sister asked a question that the non muslim sister asked there is a confusion among the muslim when you meet you ask you are a wahhabi or are you hanafi or a shafi or a maliki so there is a confusion amongst the muslims so what is the reply i do agree with the uh, non muslim sister that unfortunately many muslims call different names but when i tell the hindus to go back to the veda i tell the muslims to go back to the quran
Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al Imran, chapter number three, verse number 103, Allah says, Wa tasimu bi habli lai jamiy wa la tafarku. Hold the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. We have to hold the rope.